All right. In this problem, we have two vertical forces are applied to a beam of the cross section. So this is the cross section that we are referring to. Shown, determine the maximum tensile and compressive stresses in portion B, C. So here we are asked to find the maximum tensile and compressive stresses. In this beam, we have at a, a support called pin support. It restricts the movement in the vertical and horizontal direction. And we have a, 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 a D, a roller support that restricts the movement only in the vertical direction. Since we are only dealing with vertical directions and the only uh, horizontal direction that we have is at, su at support A, that horizontal uh, reaction will be zero. In, in here, we have two vertical, two equal vertical uh, forces applied on the beam at equal distances from support A and D. So as you can see, 150 millimeter, 150 millimeter. And visually, you can conclude that these two external forces with these two reaction forces will cause the beam to concave up. And when you, uh, when we find, when when we find the reaction forces, we will see that we will have equal and opposite forces that will cause couple. And because of the bending that happens because of this pure bending that is happening, we will use the elastic flexural formula. And here the word elastic. Elastic means that when we remove the 10, two 10 kilonewton applied forces from the beam, the beam will return back to its original shape. There will be no permanent deformation. So we will use this equation to find the stress the normal stress or the internal normal stress caused by the pure bending. In this problem, we are asked to find the maximum uh, tensile and compressive stresses. Uh, so to do that, we need to find the moment and we need to find the uh, centroid of the cross section and C here represents the distance from the center of the uh, cross section to the uh, to the furthest point or, or or at the top of the beam. So here you have this dashed line that represents the neutral axis. The neutral axis passes through the centroid of the whole cross section. And we need to find where is this where is this center so to find the maximum stress we need to find how far away the from the neutral axis all the way to the top that will give you the maximum stress and how far away from the neutral axis that passes through the center of the show of the cross section all the way to the bottom that will also give us the maximum normal stress and through the problem we will see whether the top will be compression or tension or the bottom will be compression or tension so this we call it the flexural stress or bending stress right here we we have a cut of this cross section where as you can see the neutral axis passes through the center and the reason why we call it the neutral axis because the normal stress at the neutral axis is zero. And as you can see, the C, the C value, this one, which is this one right here, as we go, all, uh, as we increase in length all the way to the top, we will have the maximum normal stress. So in this one, since the stresses is acting on the cross section. This is compression, and this is, and these forces down here are pulling on the cross section. That that will cause tension. 
So when you when we have a beam that concave up, at the top we will have compression, at the bottom we will have tension. And when we and when uh, and when we find the moment, we, it will be a positive moment. When we have a, a beam that concave down, like this, uh, tension will be on the top, compression will be on the bottom, and when we find the moment, it will give us a negative moment. So our goal is to find the maximum normal stress. So first thing we want to find the moment. So we want to find the reaction forces and then we will make a cut in the beam BC and solve for the moment. So first thing, let's draw a free body diagram for the beam AD where we will have two vertical forces acting at point B and C and both of them are equal vertical forces 10 kN and 10 kN and both of these uh, two vertical forces are at equal distance from the supports 150 millimeter and 150 millimeter and we will have uh, the reaction force A sub Y and a reaction force D sub Y so here to find the reaction forces we will use the static equilibrium equations where the sum of the forces are equal to zero and the sum of the moments are equal to zero here we, all, here we only have the forces in the vertical direction, so here we will have the sum of the forces in the y direction equal to zero, and going up is positive and going down is negative. So, here, so that will be your equation, a sub y plus d sub y minus 10 minus 10, and we can rewrite this equation. Now we will take the sum of the moment at A. And the convention in here, if we rotate counterclockwise, it's positive. If we rotate clockwise, it's negative. So here at A, where we take the moment, we will imagine that we have a wheel in here. So imagine we have a wheel in here, all right? So the first thing we have is the 10 kN at B at a distance of 150 millimeter or 0 0.15 meter. So, you know, uh, moment is force times distance. But well, the question is, here the 10 kN times 0 0.15 meter we have here negative. Then why? Because if you imagine and you took the 10 kN at B acting uh, at the end of the wheel, it will cause the wheel to go clockwise. So that's why we have negative in here. And the same thing for the force, vertical force at C, which is 10 kN times the distance to the uh, to A, which is 0.4 meter. And the same thing when we apply uh, the 10 kN at C at the end of the wheel, it will cause the wheel to go clockwise. So that's why we also have a negative in here. D sub y, if we applied it at the end of the wheel, it will cause the wheel to go counterclockwise. That's why here we have positive. And the distance from D y all the way to A is 0 0.55 meter. So this is simple here. We can solve for D sub y, which will be 10 kN. And we can take this 10 kN, plug it into this equation, and it will give us a sub y equal 10 kN. All right, so now what we will do is we will make a cut in the beam BC to find the moment. All right, so imagine this is the beam right here, and here we have the cut. All right, so you have A and the reaction force 10 kN, B and the vertical force 10 kN, and, uh, and it is at at a 150 millimeter away from A and here we want to find the moment. All right, so now the, we will take the sum of the moment at A and 
going counterclockwise is positive. So we will have our M uh, moment. And the same thing we, we, you know, we did before, we imagined that we have a wheel at A, th that the, the force at B will cause the wheel to go clock clockwise, which give us negative. So it will, so the moment is force times distance, 10 kilonewton times 0 0.15 meter equal to zero. And here we will solve for the moment. We'll, we'll go to the other side of the equation, will become positive. So here we have a positive moment. So that tells us that the beam is concaving up. So back to our original equation here we we are able to find that the we are able to find the moment check and the moment is positive which tells us that the, the beam is concaving up now we want to find the centroid of the cross section so here we will have our y-axis and here we will have our x-axis for this to find the center. Now, since we are dealing here with a prismatic beam where we can cut it in half and have equal halves like this one, you know, from here to here, it's 25 millimeter. And from here to here is 25 millimeter. So we will use the base as our origin uh, or the x-axis will be zero. So here the we we you know we need to find the center so x will be 0 now we we want to find what is y so here we will use an equation oh before we do that uh, to find the center we will divide this cross section to three known areas so rectangle 1 rectangle 2 and rectangle 3 and here we will use uh, to find the y coordinate in here so we know the x is zero we we want the y coordinate from the base so it will be the sum of the uh, centroid of the cross of the three cross sections times the area divided by the sum of the areas so in here we will have a small table where we're going to have the area uh, millimeter squared and we're going to have the center of each shape and then we will do the multiplication so we have shape one we have shape two we have shape three and we need to find the sum all right so for area one it's a rectangle so it will be 10 times 50 500 and the same thing for two and we will have the same thing for three and then we will find the sum the center for shape one now, half of 50 is 25, but if you put a 25 in here, that will be wrong because we are, the reference that we have is at this X naught. So it's from the base. So, so you will have 10 plus 25, it will give you 35. And the same thing for shape two, it will give you 35. Now from the base all the way to the middle, it will give you five for shape number three. Now we will do the multiplication. 500 times 35 will give you 17,500. We will do the same for shape two, shape three, and then we will find the sum. We will take these val two values and plug it in back to our original equation. And that will give you 25 millimeter. So that tells us that the centroid is 25 millimeter from the base of the cross section somewhere around here and that will be our center and once we find the centroid of the whole cross section the neutral axis passes through the centroid of the cross section where uh, the stresses are zero and from it we can find out how far away all the way to the top and all the way to the bottom so we can find the C value in the fluctural uh, stress formula. So right here, we the, the distance from the center all the way to the bottom. So it will, it's, we said it's 25 millimeter.
but since it's we are below the neutral axis it will give you a negative value and from the neutral axis all the way to the top that will give you a positive number and and the distance is 35 millimeter so going back to our original equation in here so we were we are able to find the moment we are able to find the uh, center of the uh, cross section uh, sorry the centroid of the cross of the, of the cross section and from it we were we were able to find the um you know the 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 distant from the neutral axis to the top and the distant from the neutral axis all the way to the bottom so now we will you we we will we need to find the area moment of inertia now in order to find the area moment of inertia we will do the same thing as we did for the centroid we will divide the cross section into three known uh, areas and we will divide it into three rectangles in here so here we will have rectangle one rectangle two rectangle three and you know we, we found the center and the neutral axis passes through the center and the distance from the neutral axis all the way to the bottom is minus 25 millimeter and from the neutral axis all the way to the top is 35 millimeter and the neutral axis where you're going to have uh, where we're going to have the z-axis so if which is the axis of rotation in here so we have rectangles so we can go to a reference table and from the reference table we can pick the, the appropriate area moment of inertia uh, equation to find the individual uh, area moment of inertia for each shape so in here the x-axis in this reference is equivalent to the z-axis in our problem so so we will use the first equation where the base times the height to the power 3 divided by 12 and the base is always parallel to the axis of rotation so the axis of rotation in our problem is z so the base for example for shape number one will be 50. if we if if the axis of rotation let's say in the y-axis then uh, for example for for shape number one the base will be 10. all right so in here we will you know use the first equation which is the base times height cubed divided by 12 and we plug in the values but here we added these two numbers so what are these two numbers the, well in to find the uh, maximum normal stresses caused by bending uh, we need to find the area moment of inertia with respect to the centroid of the whole cross section so for shape number one what will happen is we need to shift the center and said so we here we have 10 millimeter so half of 10 millimeter is 5 millimeter so now we need to change from this center at 5 millimeter all the way to the center that we found so here what we did is we took the area of the cross section times the distance between the two centers the center for shape one and the center uh, and the, uh, yeah we take the distance squared and the distance between them is 20 uh, millimeter and we will do the same thing for uh, shape number two and we will use the parallel axis theorem and we and the distance between the center of the uh, of shape number two and the neutral axis or or to the uh, center in here is 10 millimeter so the area times d squared so that is we use the parallel axis theorem to uh, to um, shift our uh, origin i uh, sorry our centroid to the center of the whole shape and since um, 
the uh, two and three are the same so they will have the same value so you can plug these values into your calculator and you will get this value and for i sub one you will get this value so now what we will do is we will add up i sub one i sub two i sub three which all of them are uh, are found to be respect with the centroid of the cross section so the i total will give you this value all right so now going back to our original equation to find the maximum stress so the moment we are able to find it great we were able to find the centroid of the cross section and find uh, the the distance between the centroid and all the way to the top of the beam and the bottom of the beam and now we found the uh, area moment of inertia for the cross section with respect to the centroidal axis all right so now let's plug in the values that we found all right so we found at the top that you know we said that we have the 35 and at the bottom we have minus 25 all right so the stress the maximum stress happened all the way at the top and here we will plug in the values and don't forget to convert your millimeter to meter and here I use the conversion factor of 1000 to the power 4 and we when you plug this into your calculator it will the answer will be negative 102.44 megapascal now what does a negative mean the negative mean at the top we will have compression now this now the the stress the maximum stress also happen all the way at the bottom and it is at a distance of minus 0 0.025 meter and don't forget the conversion factor you plug this into your calculator it will give you a positive 73.2 megapascal and positive means that you have a tension you have tension so that would be all we are able to find the maximum tensile and compressive stresses thank you very much for watching and have a good day bye bye